Yo, we are back once again. This is the Wu Tang Podcast. It is I, Singar Superior, and for this episode, I got a very, very special guest. I have you, God, on the line. What's good with you, Yui? What's going on, big man? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good, man. Um, first of all, congrats on the book. How does it feel to, uh, you know, get kind of recognition and acclaim um, within a different medium? Well, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for 20 some years, so acclaim is, is cool. You know, it's a beautiful thing. You know, it don't, it, don't, it don't signify nothing to me as a creative artist. You know, I'm just, I'm just doing what I like to do, man. You know what I mean? And, and, and as far as like rhyming, and um, I got, you know, I'm just branching off and just doing something different, you know, and uh, that's basically it. And you're currently in Houston right now doing like some promotion work? Yeah, I've been I've been all around the country, you know, doing all promotional work right now, you know, you know, just a part of the game that um, you know, that people don't know about. You know, this is this this is this is what you gotta do to uh, you know, to promote your product. You gotta get out there, shake hands, kiss babies, no matter, you know, what the terrain is like, you know, just the first wave. You know, I've been here many a times, you know. So promotion is very important, you know, when it comes to music and um and any type of product that you're trying to get out there. You know, I, I finished reading the book uh, yesterday, and I was curious to know, since you're in Houston now, um, if you ever get flashbacks of the incident that you bring up in, um, in your book about y- y'all going to Houston back in the day and getting booed off stage and everything like that. Nah, nah, we don't, we don't get no flashbacks. Houston, Houston love us, you know what I mean? We just had to break that market. You know, at the time, there was a tough market to break because, you know, Scarface had it locked down. And, uh, uh, I like Big Butts. I forgot that dude's name. Um, Sir Mix a lot of you know, all those, the, the Midwest artists had a lockdown. So, of course, in order to break that market, they put us out there on promotional tour again. <laughs> it, was, it was a promotional tour. And um, we, we, at the end of the day, we, we won the love of the fans, you know. So, so you know, that, that was back in the days. Everything, you got to understand, from everything in that book, right, is from the ages of 5 to 26 years old. I was about 25, 20, 25 years old, you know, and that part of my life is what I, what I put in that book, you know. Yeah, man, it was, it was a crazy journey, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it is a very, a very interesting journey. So for you, it took you about two or three years to, uh, to finish writing this memoir, and I think I, 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 I saw it in another interview that you said that you took out about 150 pages, so... For you, did you have like a certain kind of um, you know formula and approach to um, to writing to writing this book? Well, my formula was see, I started in 2010, and what I was doing was I put notes together, this, this little random notes, and I put them in a book, and then stack my notes out of my book, and I just put it in my book, and I was like, you know, just slowly but surely thinking about what I'm going to talk about. Then. One day, you know, we was having a little, 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 little gathering. I was telling stories again, you know, in front of some people, and they were so trained and memor- memorized by these, by these stories. You know, they was like, "Come on, you can't have You know, I already know this how I grew up. I can't make this up. This, this is this is how I saw it." And it was so astounding. I said to myself, me and my, you know, my man Domingo, he was like, "Yo, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta lay it down." So I just started to go from the beginning and work my way all the way up until I was 26 years old, you know. And it, it, it wasn't that hard, ain't no formula, really. It just, I just gave you what I went through, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of easy for me to, you know, there's no secret bullet, no secret way of doing shit. You just got to, if you lived it, you can write about it. I can't, I can't put down nothing on the pad, on the pad that I ain't see or that I ain't break. You know, that's, that's, far, as, that's far as with books. And my rhymes. I only rhyme about the shit I did or I saw or the things I've been through. You know what I'm saying? And um, and that that sums up UGOD. So for you, it wasn't it wasn't that different as you know writing like writing a rhyme or anything like that. And even your approach to it was a bit similar. Just kind of writing down notes and just putting them in a notebook, kind of like you know if you have like a rhyme book or whatever. Basically. And then, but then, but then you still got to have that foundation of the realness. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta apply what you like I said, what you went through. You gotta really like they put it on there. You know, um, I ain't I ain't hold no punches. I just basically wore my heart on my sleeve and say, Yo, boom, this is what this is what it was, this is how I saw it. Because the funny thing about stories, right? The things I've been through, 
the things I've been through is that we can both have been through the same shit. You see this shit is totally different way than I see it, though. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is my story. But this is my story. This is how I felt. This is how I see it. And this is how I felt. I should just explain it to the world. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. And you did the uh, narration for the audio book too, right? Yeah, I did the narration. But you know, I had to, I had to sit there and, um, and and do it. It took me like three days to run through my whole book. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I, I can imagine like um because you know I, I've heard about diff- well, first of all, like I just I just like recently, relatively recently, I just found out that they have like professional like narrators like to do shit like that, and like certain things that like you know certain like you know processes that they have. Um, did you have to go through like any kind of weird process that like they that they may have like uh, told you about or something when you were um, recording for the book? No, nah, no. Nah, matter of fact, it's just like it's just like being in a studio around it, except you just gotta read. And you know, I I know how to read. <laughs> you know, I, I I know how to read a book. I also know how to I know about wordplay. I know about you know I know about emphasis on, on certain words. I know how to deliver, I know how to deliver words. You know what I mean? That's what I've been doing for 20 something years. Same thing, you know, the same thing like when you're rhyming, you gotta put that, you gotta put that on. You know what I'm saying? There's it's no shortcuts. There's no, no, I want brothers, I want brothers to know that, you know, that when you're trying to put something together, a piece of work, there's no shortcuts. You know what I mean? People, you know, you wanna put it together fast, try to get a check, and, and that's not how you, that's not how you make a masterpiece, man. You gotta sit there, like, literally hammer that shit out, man. That's why I took me two and a half years to do it. Some more folks take five years to write a class. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not about the time you put in. It's about at the end of the day, is this shit a smoker? Is this shit hot? Is this shit, you know, is this, is this, is this going to be fire? You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and that's basically what you got to do. I was looking at your discography and everything, and uh, and you you, t- you tend to have a pattern like you go about about four to five years in between albums and everything like that. So with regards to all that, you have Venom coming out March thirtieth. Wasn't Venom supposed to come out maybe like last year actually? Well, see that's that's another thing too. Like you, y'all y'all need this Wu Tang niggas always put some fucking pattern and shit. Number one, there's no fucking pattern. You know what I'm saying when you come out. Well, you should be right. <laughs> That's the part of the problem, you know what I'm saying? It's no pass. I put it down right now. I could have put out a record last year, but you understand something? I was writing a book and a record and a mixtape. That's a lot of writing. That's a lot of writing. I mean, how it takes for you to make that shit right, though, is how long it needs to take to make it right. I mean, once you establish artists, it ain't no trying to compete and you're trying to, you know, let you are gonna put out a microwave. It's just gonna be microwave with food. I want I want a real plate of food, you know what I'm saying? So and when you see my legacy, I want my shit to be like, oh that's a nice nice body of work to put together. Yeah, yeah, I took my time, I like quality. I mean I like quality product based and better than quantity. I'd rather I'd rather have a one nice one than a whole bunch of, you know, whack shit, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's, that's just how I work. You know what I mean? So, that's just, you know, that's, that's, pretty, that's the reason why I feel like I take that long to, you know, you know, process my stuff. So how long, uh, so how long did it take you to, you know, to, to develop and, uh, and record Venom? Well, I recorded Venom like a year and a half. About a year and a half, you know what I'm saying? And, um, like I said, the book was going to take a majority of my time. That's why I was on the phone. Like, you know, because I was, I was, I was up to be writing this stuff, doing a whole lot of, you know, other things. Is there anything that's different in your approach to Venom compared to the keynote speaker? Oh, definitely. This record is way more, you know, that's another thing, too. That's another reason why, I, you know, when it's time for me to write my stuff, I try to beat my last record. Always. You know what I mean? That's like one of my pet peeves that I got to do better than my last record. I guess, at least for me so far, it sounds like it's going to be a bit more hard-hitting than the keynote speaker, which was hard-hitting within its own right. Yes, definitely going to be way more, way more hot. But, yeah, at the end of the day, when you put those shit together, though, you know, it's, it's two, 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 two missiles, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. One more thing I did want to touch on with regards to the book is, um, I guess, the, like, the, um, the portion where you talk about your son and everything um, and the incident. 
Um, I'm curious to know, like, you know, how is it for you to see your son? You know, he's in the film, but he's also in the music and everything. So um, how, how does it feel for you to see your son follow in your in your footsteps and everything? I love it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm always having these discussions with him. Like, yo, you got to stand on your own. You know, you can't be overshadowed by the same shit. You know what I mean? And um, that's how I feel about it, you know, because I want it to be him. I want to get his own identity out there. To me, he's 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 dope. He's dope. He's a, he's a he's a ill he's a ill he's a ill writer and a ill song. You know the song. You know song um developer. So because he's you know kids are gonna be kids. Man. You know what I'm saying? You try to guide him along the way, but sooner or later he'll he'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? He'll figure it out. I mean, do you guys have any songs together? Well, that's another problem. You know, I try to do a couple of songs, but it didn't turn out right. So I, I didn't know I had to keep going on what I had to. You know, but I'm, I'm not one of those motherfuckers. I gotta get it. I gotta get something out of them that I feel like it's really, you know, worthy for me to put out there like that. You know, because I want I want some I want some class. I need a, I need a, I need a bang up. Well, I feel you. Um, you know, I was looking at uh, at a, a video of uh, of your son Intel and uh, and, and Meth's son uh, Father Shy. Um, you know, doing some freestyles on stage, and um, I can imagine for you, especially, you know, you talking about you know how close you and Meth uh, Meth are um, in your book. Um, you know, how it is like seeing you know both of your children together like that. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Man. <laughs> It's a great situation, man. Because you sitting there smiling on the back. Like, we've never thought that it got even, you know, in your words. In the back of your mind, you just couldn't conceive that it happened one day. You know? <laughs> Are you serious? Like, for real? So oh, that's just crazy, man. But, you know, like I tell them, though, that's all good in our circle. But you got to get out of from in the woods and stand on your own feet. Because so standing out of need that, too. You know what I'm saying? Stand down and stand down and stand down and just can't be Wu Tang. Other entities got to come with that. You know, it's like that's like that's like saying Atlanta got to be fucking just Ti. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't do that. You, you got to have other groups come up out of there. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm basically. That's, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm. Saying. But they can stand on their own they nice like that. No stories and they hell like that. They nice. But you just can't come up and even up. And then later on when you pop off on your own, then you be like, Oh, that's that nigga stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Too late now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? That's how you gotta do it. But, you know, telling the youngsters that, you know, it's hard. It's hard. So I know you gotta go. So I guess in closing, um, what's going on with the next Wu Tang album? I don't know. You don't know? Don't know. Have you guys been recording at all? You didn't talk to your man Bill about that, did All right, well, will do, man. Um, you got thanks so much for uh, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Yo, anytime you call me, I'm gonna be there. I'm just, you know, we just, we just, you know, I just, just hit me up anytime you need. Well, this has been another edition of the Wu Tang Podcast. You can find us at Wu Tang Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, check us out on Apple Podcasts. Be sure to rate and subscribe. You can also find us on SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. And with all that, we are out. Peace. Hey, what's up, people? This is Issa from the Young Free and Couple Podcast. Isn't it amazing how Wu Tang can bring people together from all around the world? If we want to keep this going, this podcast is a great way guys i want you to rate review comment and subscribe okay also check them out on twitter facebook and youtube bang Load up.